Hello, and welcome to this demo of CypherTrust Secrets Management, powered by Akeelis. In this demo, we're going to create a dynamic secret for a Postgres database instance. We want to eliminate long-lived privilege credentials and replace them with ephemeral logins that are automatically removed when they expire. We're also going to see how to protect Secret Zero, the privileged account used to automate production of the dynamic secrets. Our first step is to create an encryption key that is protected with the customer fragment stored locally in the CypherTrust Manager. This customer fragment ensures that only you have access to your secrets, regardless of where they may be stored. And here we are in CypherTrust Manager, where you can see now Secrets Management has been added as yet another service tile that we can click on and go to our Secrets Management console. First, let's create an encryption key that's protected by our customer fragment. We'll use this key to protect the other secrets that we create. First, we give the key a name. And then we can optionally specify a location, similar to a namespace where we want this object to be stored. Here I'm using demo. We're going to tell it it's an AES-256 Galois counter mode key, and then finally specify the customer fragment that protects this individual key. So it's only usable within our environment. Here we can see our demo folder has been created and our customer key now sits in the folder. If we take a look at the properties, we can see the key exists and it's been protected by the customer fragment, which means that it is only usable on this instance of CypherTrust Manager. The next step is to create a target that represents the resource we want to manage. In this case, it's going to be a Postgres database. We're going to create a Postgres target, but just notice there's a lot of other resources that we can protect as well. As we did before, we'll give this resource a name and also specify a location where we want it to be stored. We also want to choose our local protection key that's protected by our customer fragment. Next, we need to specify the connection information to connect to the Postgres database. This information constitutes secret zero, so we're going to need to find a way to protect this, and we'll do that with a rotated secret. Now, if we look in our demo folder, we can see our Postgres database target. And looking at the properties, we can see it is protected by our customer fragment. And right now, there are no other resources that are utilizing this target. But we're going to address that in just a moment. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that that secret zero, that initial privileged account to log into the Postgres database, is secured. So to do this, we're going to set up a rotated secret to automatically rotate that password so that we don't know what it is. So once again, we'll navigate into our demo folder. And this time, we're going to add a new secret that is a rotated secret. We give that rotated secret a name. Here it's Postgres system. And we're going to specify that this is using the Postgres target that we just created earlier. The resource type is a target. We're going to use the gateway that exists on the CypherTrust manager. And we're going to use that customer fragment protected key. 
We're going to set this, uh, we're going to bump it down a little bit to rotate every 30 days. Now we have our rotated secret. And we can see there's a rotate now button if we want to force a rotation, or we can let it rotate on the schedule. So you can see currently there's one version, the original version of the password. If we go and force a rotation by clicking rotate secret now, now we can see there's a second version of that secret. The final step is to create a dynamic secret using that target that we've created and protected. This is going to be used to grant DBA access to humans or machine identities such as DevOps scripts. Once again, we go to create a new secret, this time a dynamic secret. We specify our Postgres database as the type of dynamic secret we want. Give it a name. We're also going to keep it in our demo location. Notice that there are the SQL commands that will be used to create and remove the credentials automatically. We also can set the time to live. We associate it with our gateway and our customer fragment for protection. Choose our existing Postgres target. And we now have our dynamic secret. If we cl click on the properties, we can see it's protected with our customer fragment. And we have the option to get the dynamic secret from the UI. But we'll also see that you can pull this from the command line or through APIs as well. And there we have our dynamically created secret that in our case is going to last for 60 minutes. CypherTrust Secrets Management has a robust API for interacting with secrets, retrieving them, updating them, and so on. In our case, we're going to use a command line utility to retrieve that secret. Here I'm pointing our CLI utility at our gateway within the CypherTrust Manager. And now I can run the Aquilas command to retrieve that secret and use it in my scripts. Here we can see the JSON response from the API request. I have my user ID, my password, and I can see the time to live in minutes. In this example, I'm in a PowerShell terminal, so I can use PowerShell's ability to process JSON and store this credential information in a variable that I can then use for my DevOps scripts. So here, for example, you can see my user ID, and my user password. Thank you all for watching this demo of CypherTrust Secrets Management powered by Aquilas. And if you'd like to learn more, there are a few links here on the screen, a link to the CypherTrust Secrets Management landing page. There's also a link to download the community edition of CypherTrust Manager, which is what I was using for this demo, and also our documentation at Talus Docs Online.